it's going to feel very difficult to train your mind to better yourself, to manifest what you want, to consciously create what you want in your life without regulating your nervous system. You're going to find yourself being caught up in cycles of stress, of overwhelm, of upsetness, and overall just feeling very difficult to feel overall good without regulating your nervous system. So these practices, I want every single one of you, every single one of you to practice at least one of these every single day, ideally multiple times a day, just getting in the habit of doing these practices. What's up? My name is Sabrina and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Here in the Better You space, we teach creatives, dreamers, and entrepreneurs how to train their minds to make their daydreams their real daily lives. If you're looking for a deeper transformation, feel free to check out one-on-one -on -one mentorship or our online signature program, Unleash Your Life. And I did just make a guided workbook for you that will help you make your specific daydreams your daily life. I highly suggest you check it out. So the links for those will be left in the description below and let's get into it. Now, these are in no specific order and there are also other ways to regulate your nervous system. I'm mainly going to be talking about these specific four because they have been most profound in my life, in my clients' lives, in my students' lives, and they're pretty simple to implement in your everyday life. So anytime you feel triggered, anytime you feel upset, anytime you are experiencing a state that you don't want to be in your future... I want you to pause what you're doing, stop what you're doing, and regulate your nervous system. Practice one of these tools or practices or techniques to regulate your system, to calm your system back out, so then you can create what you want. Then you can focus on what you want and focus on feeling good and creating a life that you want to live. So the first technique or tool that I want to talk about is physical exertion. Now, this is pretty much how it sounds. It's it's exerting your physical body. Emotions are energy in motion. When we don't let our emotions flow through and out of us, we're keeping the energy of that emotion stagnant inside of our bodies. Now, some of us have gotten really good at doing this, but it creates this overall gnawing feeling of stress or of overwhelm that just sits in the back of our mind or like a dull feeling of like sadness or grief because we haven't let us, ourselves fully express it. We haven't let that emotion fully move through and out of our bodies. Just because you hold it in doesn't mean you've successfully handled that emotion. You're just keeping that emotion, the energy of that emotion dormant until something happens that triggers it again. And then this is why people bottle things up and then blow up. Physical exertion could be a few things. It could be letting yourself cry. It's okay to cry, people. Even you men that are listening to this, it's okay to cry. Real men cry, okay? Because that's a healthy way of expressing emotion and letting that emotion out of you. This could also be yelling. Now, this is not yelling at someone else. This is a healthy way of just letting letting yourself scream when you're by yourself. <laughs> Maybe you and your friend can just have like a screaming fit together and you guys both are just ah together. That's great too, but we don't want to project our emotions onto other people. Okay, that's not healthy for the other person. But by letting yourself scream when you're alone in your car, when you're alone at home, this can be a good way to get that energy up and out of your system. It's going to be letting yourself have a rage fit when you're by yourself and punching your pillow, punching your bed. This is, again, in safe and controlled ways. This can also be going to the gym. This can be going for a run, okay? Even just physical moving your body, you're letting that energy up and out of you. This is why people say that gym is their therapy. Most people don't realize that when they go to the gym, they're actually regulating their nervous system through physical exertion. This can be jumping up and down on one of those, one of those small like rebounder trampolines. I really want to get one of those. If you're able to, and if you want to, you can get one of those smaller rebounder trampolines and keep in your home and you can literally just bounce up and down. It'll help move that energy up and out of your system so it doesn't stay stagnant inside of you. This can also be physical shaking. I know I've mentioned this in a couple of videos before, but some wild animals, after they've been chased by predators, they will physically shake their entire body to get that excess energy off, to get that excess energy out. And we can do this too. Literally stomping around, shaking your shoulders, shaking your arms, shaking your hands, shaking your head. I don't care how crazy you look. I really want us to normalize these ways of regulating your nervous system because if it works, it works. And again, these are all things that you can do by yourself in your own time and space. You can keep this between you and you. I don't care. 
Just practice these, please. I'm begging you. Now, the communication from your mind and body works both ways. Your mind can tell your body how you're feeling and your body can also tell your mind how you're feeling. So if you constantly think thoughts that are in alignment with feeling really happy, feeling really grateful or feeling really calm, your body is then your mind is going to tell your body that you're now happy, grateful, and calm, and you're going to feel those feelings, and it's going to help regulate your system. Now, the flip side of it, if your body is acting and responding in a way as if it is really excited or happy or calm, it then is telling your mind that you are happy, excited, and calm. Which brings me to the second tool that I want to talk to you about which is breath work. When you slow and control your breathing, you are telling your mind, you're communicating through your body to your mind that you are now calm, that you are now cool, calm, collected, you're good, things are good, things are going great. And this is a way to regulate the system. And in fact, when you take deep belly breaths, you know, when you breathe through your belly, you can feel your belly physically expand. You are sending a signal straight to the vagus nerve that is telling your entire system that you are now safe, that you are now good. So this can physically be just slowing your breathing down, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. This can be many different breath work patterns. Some people will do box breathing. It's breathing in through your nose for four seconds, holding for four seconds, releasing from your mouth for four seconds, breathing in, hold, release. You can do that type of style breathing. If it helps just to hold your breath at the top for a while to just calm your whole system and then slowly release, you can do that. Sometimes what I really like to do is I will visualize when I'm breathing in that I'm collecting all of this pent up energy. And then when I breathe out, I'm visualizing myself releasing that pent up energy. And I'll do that over and over again. I'll also do this when my mind just feels cluttered, when I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed in my mind, my thoughts start to bounce off of each other. I'll do this breathing technique while I will visualize breathing in, collecting the pent up energy in my brain, and then breathing out and releasing it. It really, after like four, five, six breaths of doing that, I'll immediately start feeling more calm, more at ease, more clear-minded. And this practice is so incredibly easy. You can do it when you're driving. You can do it when you're sitting in class. You can do it at work. And it doesn't even have to be noticeable. But you do want to make sure that you are doing it long enough for your system to calm down. This is for every practice. The amount that you feel triggered or upset you will need a little more time to regulate yourself. So if you feel really angry about something and then you spend, you try to spend 30 seconds breathing and you're like, Sabrina, this isn't working. It's because you've spent 30 seconds breathing. You need to, you need to spend some time into this to really calm your system. Okay. The, all of these techniques have been proven to work, but you do need to spend a little time on yourself for yourself to better yourself. The third practice I'm going to talk about, and before I say this, make sure you stay until the fourth one because I really want to talk to you guys about the fourth one too, okay? Don't click out of this early. But the third one I want to talk about is cold therapy. I used to ignore this one because I was like, that doesn't sound fun, but... I have been practicing this almost every week and it has been a game changer. So I'm talking to you guys about it. Cold therapy can be cold plunges. You know, that's getting really popular right now. It can be cold showers. It can just be getting one of those big salad bowls, putting some cold water and some ice in there and then sticking your face in it after you wake up in the morning. Now, I know this may not sound desirable. Okay, I get it. But it is really, really powerful in building your body's and mind's adaptability to stress. By exposing your body to this cold, you're again like stabilizing your body's emotional reactions. This also has an insane amount of physical health benefits, but I'm only going to talk about the regulating your nervous system benefits for the intention of this video. And even if you just start by ending your shower with 30 seconds of cold water, that's better than having no cold exposure at all. Now, this is not the same as walking out into cold weather. When you're in water, it has like four times the effect on your body. So it does have to be some type of like water immersion type exposure for this to be truly impactful. But I will say, I started to go to this breathwork and cold plunge class every week. And I've been doing this to stay proactive. I do it to regulate my nervous system on a more regular basis so that I feel less triggered in my day-to-day -day life. 
I can keep myself level-headed, stay cool, calm, collected more often than not because I'm constantly doing things to regulate my system before it even gets dysregulated, which is what I really want you to start doing too. Since I've been doing that, I've been feeling way more clear-headed, way less stressed, way less overwhelmed. And I've just felt so much more on top of it, on top of my life, on top of my habits, on top of like myself. So if you have access to a cold plunge, that's great. If you want to do the bowl of ice water in the morning, or if you want to just do cold showers, these are all really, really great techniques to regulate your nervous system. The fourth practice to regulate your nervous system, which is one of my favorite ways, is EFT, emotional freedom tapping or emotional freedom technique. This is another one that may look a little funny to do, but it works extremely well. EFT has been now proven to heal people from chronic depression, chronic anxiety, PTSD, obsessions, addictions, and many, many more. It's really effective in rewiring your mind and regulating your nervous system. This works by tapping specific points of your face and your body because there are clusters of nerve bundles in these specific areas. The specific ones that I will use with my clients are above the eyebrow, the temple, under the eye, under the nose, the chin. Okay, take notes on these guys. Collarbone, your side, kind of if you're a girl, kind of like where your bra strap would be, but like your side and then the top of your head. Through tapping these specific areas while expressing how you're feeling, they're like channels and gateways for your emotions to flow out so much faster. Okay, so if you want an uncomfortable emotion to leave your body much, much faster, this is a really great practice for you. So say that you're working on like growing your socials and then you see a little troll come on and say all these weird things and make a few comments on a post you made on Instagram and you read it and you're like, oh my God, this person just said all these things and you don't want to feel upset by it. You want to feel nonchalant from it. You want to just brush it off your shoulder and still feel cool, calm, collected. Put your phone down. Let yourself feel the emotion of the, of however you feel reading that person's little trolly trolls comment and just start tapping on these spots and just start expressing. I can't believe this person said this comment. Oh, it makes me feel this type of way. Oh, and it makes me feel so angry and upset and blah, blah, blah. And keep expressing as you're tapping within like two or three rounds of just continuing to express how you feel each sentence, new point you will notice the emotional charge will go from a very high number, say like seven out of 10 or an eight out of 10 to a very low number, say a three out of 10 or a two out of 10 or a one out of 10 or completely neutral where you're like, wow, you know what? I actually don't even care anymore. Now, the cool thing about EFT is you can do it to release emotions, but you can also do it to wire in new positive emotions that you do want to feel. So what I will suggest for EFT to not only regulate your nervous system to a calm, cool, collected state, but it's to then after you feel more neutral, the emotional charge is at a three or below, then continue to the EFT tapping process. And I want you to affirm how you want to feel. You know what? I don't even care what people say about me online because I know who I am. And I understand that people's perceptions of me are only a reflection of them. So I'm just going to send them love because they're obviously feeling some kind of hate and negativity and they got some bad juju and I'm not going to let them put their bad juju on me. I only attract good juju and just say, say how you want to feel. I have done EFT while I'm in a coffee shop just because I didn't care and I would, I would be really stressed out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tap on my face. I don't even care. People didn't even notice. I've done EFT while I'm mid conversation with someone and it's a difficult conversation. I feel emotions come up and I'm like, I'm going to start tapping because I feel emotions coming up right now. And I want to regulate myself so that I can still have a cool, calm, collected conversation, even though it may be a difficult conversation. I've used EFT while moving through grief. I've used EFT while moving through a bunch of anger. It's really great for any emotion, and it's such a simple technique that you can do anytime, anywhere. None of these cost any money if you don't want them to. All of these practices can be kept between you and you. So if you got to this point of the video, please leave a flame emoji in the comment section below so I know who made it to this point. Give it a thumbs up to help out the channel, share it with a friend, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified every time I post a new one, and I will see you in the next video.